Prince Harry recently published, Spare, a book filled with memories about his time as a member of the royal family, after participating in a Netflix documentary series and giving several television interviews. According to a statement from Penguin Random House publisher, the book took first place among books featuring real stories on its first day of release by selling more than 1 million copies. According to the bookseller, Prince Harry's book, which includes his stunning confessions, broke the record of former U.S. President Barack Obama's memoir, A Promised Land. The book was sold in 16 different languages in various regions of the world. Before diving into the details of the book, don't forget to support us by liking our videos, leaving comments, and of course subscribing. In the book, Harry details everything from his often strained relationship with his father and brother after the death of his mother, to his time in the military, his relationship with Meghan Markle, and the groundbreaking decision to step away from the royal family to protect his wife and children. Almost all of the 407 pages of the book are filled with royal bombshells, but the most striking parts are the ones about his mother Princess Diana. Harry writes that when he heard the news of his mother's death from Charles, despite this devastating news, the surprising thing I remember is that I didn't cry. Not a single tear. I remember walking away from the church that morning, with the press waiting, and pulling the car over to the side to look at the tributes left by the mourners. I held my father's hand, then I cursed myself, because this gesture triggered a burst of paparazzi flashbulbs. I gave them exactly what they wanted. Emotion. Drama. Pain. He added that the only time he cried over Diana's death was when the casket was lowered. My body shook, my jaw fell, and I started crying uncontrollably, my hands in front of me. I was ashamed of violating family etiquette, but I couldn't hold it in anymore. In Spare, Harry also spoke about the years in which he believed his mother was not actually dead. They were all an act, he wrote. And once, this act was not played by the people or the press around me, but by Mummy herself. Her life was ruined, followed, harassed, lied about. So, she staged a crash to escape and distract. The realization took my breath away, and I took a deep breath in relief. He added. Harry wrote that later, he decided that he needed tangible proof of Diana's death, so he went to visit the tunnel where his mother was killed in 2007. Now I can never escape from it. I thought that moving through the tunnel would bring an end to the pain, the relentless pain of 10 years, or at least pause it. Instead, it brought the beginning of the pain, partly, he said. In the book, he also touched upon the topic of Charles and Camilla Parker Bowles's relationship. About this he wrote, Camilla played a significant role in the breakdown of our parents' marriage, and yes, that meant she played a role in the disappearance of our mother, but we understand that she too was caught up in the wave of events. We didn't hold it against her and in fact, we would forgive her happily if she could make our father happy. In the book, Harry also shares information about his brother William. He wrote about living with William in his 20s and having a lot of fun together. Therefore, they decided to do a joint interview and Harry was shocked by what William said. William told journalists that Harry was a snoring rogue and that it was said in a very funny way. However, Harry wrote that he was not so sure about this. Harry spoke affectionately about his memories of Africa, where he both personally and for his charity work spent a lot of time. He stated that the highest compliment he received was, I think your body was born in Britain but your soul was born in Africa. Harry talked about the time he spent in the underground rooms of his homes, where he drank with his friends and called the room Club H. He also revealed that he lost his virginity in a grassy area behind a bar during one of these nights to an older woman. Harry stated that he has always really loved Kate Middleton. Whenever I would worry about Kate taking Will away from me, I would comfort myself with the thought of all the laughs we would have in the future, 
and tell myself how amazing everything would be when I have such a serious girlfriend, he said. On Spare, Harry said that his panic attacks started in 2013 and were usually triggered by cameras. He also mentioned that he was diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder. Referring to his mother's death, he said, My battle started in August 1997, not in Afghanistan. He spoke about William's support in the beginning regarding his panic attacks, but then he started making fun of it. As a result, he went to therapy, where he was able to talk about his mother and release all the emotions he had suppressed, which allowed many of his memories to come back. He stated that he met Meghan Markle when she was 32 years old and that he fell in love with her immediately after seeing a photo of her taken with the dog filter on Snapchat on Instagram. He also said that the two of them started talking on July 1, 2016, which was his mother's 55th birthday. He said that his father really liked Meghan when she met Charles and Camilla, and that he was childish around her. He also talked about their first interactions and mentioned that Queen 2 Elizabeth asked Meghan about her thoughts on Donald Trump. In the days before the wedding, Harry stated that he asked for special permission from his grandmother to keep his beard at the wedding, as this had become an effective way of controlling his anxiety. He also talked about how the family was very happy when they announced that Meghan was pregnant. Harry stated that after Meghan and he expressed their intention to leave the royal family, they were later invited to the family's country mansion, which will be referred to as the Sandringham Summit. He talked about how he was presented with five options by the family on how to proceed with his departure from the family. He said that the third option, which was closest to their requests, was presented to them. He added that the third option allowed them to withdraw from the United Kingdom, but still permit them to work remotely. Harry wrote, I was helpless in terms of protecting my security. The thing that concerned me the most was the physical security of my family. To prevent another timeless death, such as the one that shook this family to its core 23 years ago and that we are still trying to recover from, was my goal. Let's take a look at some of the news that has emerged about the book after talking about what the book, Spare, is about. It is reported that the book, Spare, written by J.R. Moringer with ghostwriting was shared for free on WhatsApp. Some Twitter users are discussing that they received the PDF of the biography book via the messaging app and this situation could result in loss of sales to the press. The CEO of Transworld Penguin Random House, Larry Finley, stated, We always knew this book would sell well, but it's exceeded even our highest expectations regarding Prince Harry's book, Spare. The royal member announced that a portion of the profits will go to Senebale, a charity organization founded in 2006 with Prince Siso of Lesotho to help children affected by HIV in Africa. Prince Harry said in his statement, This is one of several donations I plan to make to charities. I'm grateful that I can repay my debt to these children and communities who are in dire need. If you want nothing to be hidden, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you in the next video. Goodbye.